Good evening to everybody. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, have the opportunity to be here this evening on behalf of the, the Vice Chancellor and uh, my colleagues on the Senior Executive of the University to uh, just say a few words. Um, I've been in this role now exactly three months today. Um, and I've just had my sort of interim chat with the Vice Chancellor. Um, he did say come back tomorrow, so it's obviously going <laughs> reasonably well so far. Um, but, it, you know, three months is a good time to just reflect on things a bit. And in my role, corporate engagement, a significant part of that responsibility is to foster and develop uh, partnerships with business, very much what Paul was just talking about. And it's been very interesting to me because um, I've been here three months and I very deliberately have tried to have a low-key approach and not go running around and knocking on people's doors, but rather just see what's happening and talk to people and look and listen and learn. And, of course, uh, in many ways, the relationship with Cochlear is, is an exemplar of what could and should be done uh, at Macquarie and, and elsewhere. Um, I've been bowled over, literally, by the interest from outside the university in these sorts of relationships. I... Uh, without exaggerating, would probably see three or four major companies at their request each week for the last three months, um, ranging from companies that are interested, like Cochlear, in um, building or having us build on campus and then locate, uh, to small biotech startups that want to put um, specially prefabricated uh, buildings uh, designed in Europe uh, on campus so that they're close to our talent, talent in the form of uh, staff, of course, and students. Um, some, some of the companies that, that have come to see me are uh, major, major companies, household names like Microsoft and GE, uh, Boral and uh, Bupa and a range of others. But there are others that are, are as I said, smaller uh, startups. So I'm very excited about um, what is happening at Macquarie and, and what the potential is. I, in many ways, as the Vice-Chancellor reminded me just a couple of hours ago, it, it could well be that this, this activity, this engagement with business, is really the future of, of Macquarie University. So no pressure at all, uh, I understand that. Um, when I was asked to uh, do this um, by Paul, I looked at the title... Uh, with some interest, and, and I've no idea what Chris is going to talk about. We haven't, we haven't uh, compared notes, but if you'll bear with me, I thought I might just share a little experience I had uh, ar exactly around innovation and um, how uh, regulation might be killing it. Uh, I'm a doctor by training, and I found myself in uh, rural Africa for about 10 years, from the late 80s to the late 90s and spent most of that time in a very remote uh, mission hospital in Zululand. And it was very interesting because it was an extraordinary opportunity to innovate. Uh, why? Because every day I came across challenges or problems or opportunities. And frankly, there was almost no regulation. So you could try things out. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but one clear example... Um, was I was confronted with the challenge of treating hundreds of patients every year with tuberculosis. Now, if you're going to treat tuberculosis, you have to treat people for six or eight months with multiple drugs. And as we all know, nobody finishes any course of any treatment they're ever given, whether it's you know five days, seven days, ten days, never mind six or eight months. And I decided we would try something different. I decided we would try high-dose treatment twice a week under direct supervision. It had never been done before. And so we broke all the rules. We broke open the drug packages and we put the required drugs into a single pack in our own pharmacy and we had the treatment delivered in the community. Okay? So the first rule we broke was you can never mix pills. All right? I didn't know you were not allowed to mix pills. <laughs> I'd only been to med school. Um, <laughs> nobody died and it went quite well, until the World Health Organization heard about it, flew in from Geneva and gave us hell, including in the British Medical Journal. Well, we told them to get lost, kept going, and proved that it worked. The other thing that we did, which was really interesting, was, um, as you would appreciate in places like that, 
the health system does not exist. There is not a network of community uh, health centers. And so we decided we would have volunteers supervise these patients in the community. Okay. Those of you that have been in places like this know that wherever you go, there is a, sh uh, a, a, a shopkeeper, a storekeeper somewhere selling things, usually out of the back of his hut. And so we engaged these volunteer lay people to supervise patients for six months on TB treatment. WHO went mad, the national authorities went mad. We very politely said, well, we'll try it out anyway. We published it, we proved it worked. We then, would you believe, got a grant from WHO to prove that it worked. And 10 years later, they commissioned us to write the global guidelines on how to treat tuberculosis in the community. So I've no idea what Chris is going to talk about. It'll be much more interesting than that. But I do make the point that there is a real issue about innovation <coughs> and regulation and whether it, uh, the, the regulation can kill innovation off. So with that, I'll hand back to Paul, who will introduce Chris Roberts, and look forward very much to an interesting evening with the rest of you. Thank you.